Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage of Faithful Living Home. Welcome to my channel. I uh, pray that you will enjoy this broadcast this evening. It's very important, as I feel all of them are. These are messages from the Holy Spirit that He puts on my heart to do and put out every week. This week's topic is called No Compromise. I listened to Joyce Meyer, and I listened to Chuck Missler, and I listened to Jim Stolley. Um, they each have their very strong suits, and they're really good to study the Bible with. And so I always link below in the description um, links to their YouTube channels, and you can search and see their messages and I heard Joyce say um, last week at some point, the line is getting very blurry between who is a believer and who isn't. And I fully agree with that. In Matthew chapter 24, in the last days, many will be deceived. Now, if you're here watching this video, you're not necessarily the one with the problem of compromise. It's the people that aren't watching this presentation that need this message likely far more than you do. And so why am I here? I'm here to help train you so that you can go out and help others stop compromising. And it's always a work in progress, right? So I need to hear this over and over again, just like anybody else. I'm not just preaching. I need to listen to the words of God and to apply them myself. It's something that we all must always keep in mind. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 4, we're reminded of the following by the Apostle Paul. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right, and even when it's not. Keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome. Correct those who err in doctrine or behavior. Warn those who sin. Exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen, to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors that they hold, and will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable. Paul talks about this 2,000 years ago. He was talking about this. And look where we are at today. Compromising publicly is not acceptable, but it's even worse behind closed doors. Behind the scenes, in your thoughts, it's really important to understand that it is not acceptable to Yahweh, the Great I Am, 
El Shaddai, Adonai, God, the Creator. Compromising is sinful behavior, whether it's done in public or in private. I'm not asking people to give up anything that I have not already given up myself in my own life, as I am his servant. I must lead by example, just as Paul said, but I'm not perfect, right? But like Paul, I press on towards the goal of knowing the truth of Yahweh and casting out sinful behaviors out of my own flesh and mind and world, okay, as he has commanded us to do. We're often told, oh, but my Jesus loves and accepts everyone, no matter what their sins are. Absolutely. However, once you start to know him, you must seek the face of God. You must seek what he commands us to do and obey. Apply it to your life. Stop the sinning. It doesn't just stop with Jesus loves you. In order to be showing and really loving God, we must obey faithfully. If we're going to be wearing t-shirts with Bible verses on the front and carry a Bible around or put a bumper sticker on our car, do Christian things, then we should take a closer look behind the scenes and make sure we're not putting lipstick on a pig. If we're going to live the life of Christians and claim to be Christians, born again, renewed, then we must not compromise in the shadows. We must not compromise for the pleasures of the flesh or the pleasures or be accepted by others around us. We cannot compromise. I don't know when Jesus will be coming back, but looking around the world today, a lot of signs outlined in the Bible have been fulfilled already, and we're seriously running out of time. It's not hard to see that he's coming back sooner rather than later. And this is very concerning because a lot of Christians, I see them all the time, online, in person, are compromising. God created each one of us to live in this current time frame for a specific reason. Something to keep in mind. Remember that. We're not randomly born and placed somewhere on earth just for the sake of it. Each one of us has a unique place and a unique role to play. This is key. You have a unique role to play. That's exciting. Embrace it. So if we're here in this time for this specific moment in history, then each one of us has a job to do. Are you willing to answer his call? He's knocking at your door right with this message right now. I'm here to help train you so that you can turn around and do the work of the ministry to the people around where you're at. I can't reach everybody. Just like Paul couldn't reach everybody, right? And then he went with Timothy and, and there is other disciples and apostles. 
everyone has different ways and different gifts and different ways of speaking and and sharing and different tasks i'm disabled and i can't go out and do things that other people can do but this i can do other people are not comfortable being on video i am so but we each have roles and every single one is equally important This is a time where you need to take everything you learn and go out into the world and use it. In Matthew 24, it says that deception is going to be great. In fact, so great and pay attention it's going to be such immense deception that God is shortening the days for the sake of the elect. So that no man, because no man could stand the deception that is coming. No man can withstand the deception that is coming to this world. Do you understand the seriousness of that? This is of the utmost importance. I'll read it to you. Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 and 22. For at, time, at that time, there will be a great tribulation, pressure, distress, oppression, such has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will again. And if those days of tribulation had not been cut short, no human life would be saved. Zero. But for the sake of the elect, God's chosen ones, those days will be shortened. So what am I talking about here? What kind of deception is so great that even the elect, God's chosen ones, would be deceived? I believe that AI, artificial intelligence, is going to play a huge role in the world's deception. Do you currently pray on a regular basis and ask God to protect you from deception? If not, start now. Pray every single day about this. Pray to Yahweh for wisdom, discernment, and that you may not be deceived. This is so important, my friends. God wants obedience without compromise, not sacrifice. For example, don't fast or doing sacrifice or religious work, in quotation mark, while sinning. Being disobedient to his word, try to make up for the sin in hoping that God will give you what you ask him for. I really highly recommend that you read Isaiah 58 for yourself. Excuse me. The people ask, why have we fasted and you haven't seen it? God answered that on the day of the fasting, you're doing as you please. Strife, mistreat one another, cheating, sinning, <sighs> worshipping other gods. You really need to revisit Isaiah 58. If your behavior is going to be ungodly, then you're fasting in vain as simple as that 
everyone needs to take this seriously, no matter where you're at in your walk with Jesus, no matter how new or young or mature you are in your faith, we can all do better, much better. Think carefully about what you think and the actions that you take. Every single thought matters. Control your mind. And on that subject, I highly recommend Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind. It's incredible and so helpful. I highly recommend you can download the audiobook on Audible. You can buy the book from Amazon or website, many places. It's a really important read, even so important. She has a version for teenagers and for young children. The battlefield of the mind is a real thing. This is where the enemy attacks. And we must protect the children. And in order to do that, we must know ourselves and know how to deal with things like that ourselves so that we can teach our children and show them Joyce's book as well. Who do you serve and obey? Do you obey God or the pagan world? Do you obey God when it feels like it or when it's convenient or it's not too much of a stretch for you? And then obey the pagan world? Because, you know, that would be too hard. I'd give up too much. What did Jesus Christ give up for you? Do you think he wanted to go and be hung on that cross and tortured? Think about it. How do you speak and act when you're out in the world? People should know that you're a Christian within 10-15 minutes of meeting you in your behavior and your character. Something about you must shine out into the world as a Christian. And I'm not talking about wearing a t-shirt with a Bible verse on it. More than You need to do more than that. There's nothing more important than how we act, how we behave. We don't amount to anything unless we're doing it. We can sit and listen to, to preachers preach and listen to, uh, you know, Bible studies or, or attend conferences and whatnot. But when we turn off the audio or when we walk out of a conference or when we walk out of church what do we do the second we step out of there watch what people do not what they say actions do speak louder than words but even more importantly than that it's how we behave behind closed doors when no one is watching. You know why? Because God is always watching 24-7, 365 days a year. Every single second, He is watching you. He sees absolutely everything each one of us does and thinks absolutely everything God's camera lens is on you so always be obedient to Yahweh be uncompromising
Be uncompromising in your body, mind, and soul. You have to want for your reputation with him to be excellent. You want it to be exceptional. Above everything else in the world, it's the most important thing that you can do. It's not about perfection. But it's about having integrity and respecting the God that created us. Paul warned Timothy to urge, encourage, warn, and rebuke with his teachings. Trouble is coming, my friends. People's eternal life is at stake, and I am here to warn and rebuke for everyone's sake. I'm not here to sugarcoat. If you want sugar, go somewhere else. I'm salt. Hi, have you met me? <laughs> I'm very salty. <laughs> uh, where do you want to spend eternity? Remember that God is outside of time. I have personally been taken outside of time. It was for a brief moment. And unless you've been there, you must try to understand that time here on earth is a hindrance. And we don't have a true concept of being timeless, eternal life. I was absolutely blessed with this experience. And I can tell you, there is no escaping eternity. And I would highly encourage everyone to aim for spending it in heaven, not hell. And that's why I'm here. Because he has shown me things. And I'm here to warn you that you must turn from the world and only seek Yahweh's face. Only seek to please Him and obey Him diligently, wholeheartedly, with all your love. I've been tasked with a specific mandate by the Holy Spirit and I'm still in training but I have passed this boot camp and I always obey Yahweh and he is the one and only God the only one that matters to me every week twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the past four months Without fail, I have recorded the messages that the Holy Spirit has asked me to teach. This week is no different. He is speaking to you through this video. I am faithful, loyal, and obedient to Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit alone nothing else no compromise of course by the same token I'm faithful loyal and obedient to my husband this goes hand in hand I am a born-again Christian transformed and baptized in the Holy Spirit I am an anointed woman of God I am Yahweh's servant I want you to be able to say the same. Because together in the body of Christ, we're much stronger than each one of us individually. 
Each one of us has been created for a unique role. You are so special to God. You don't realize it yet. But you are so special and so loved. But in order to unlock your purpose with Him, you must turn to Him and be faithful to Him alone. Don't miss out on the calling for your life. But in order to exercise our full authority in Yahweh over the devil, we must all strive for excellence. As I said, not perfection. And diligently work to improve our knowledge of the truth, the Bible, improve our behavior and become more disciplined in our knowledge and full obedience to Yahweh God alone. The enemy is alive and well, and he has been working since the days of Genesis to deceive and destroy as many Christians as possible. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, I'll read from the Amplified Bible, it says, And the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent who is called the devil and Satan, he who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And you go, okay, what do I do? Where do I start? It starts at home. Don't expect to have authority to cast out devils if you don't have the authority over your own life. At home, behind closed doors, sinful thoughts, behaviors, strife, etc. I repeat, it starts at home. Clean your abode was the first thing that the Holy Spirit told me to do after God healed me from the pain in my left hip and shoulder, I had asked to be able to be healed from this pain and I told him that I wanted to clean myself and, and, and clean my home. I didn't want to go out shopping or partying or, or you know, shopping for anything and, 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 and just get into the, the pagan world. I just wanted to be able to take care of my body without requiring a nurse or care because that's where I was headed and be able to clean my own home, cook healthy meals for my husband and I. Our body is a temple where the Holy Spirit comes in to dwell and we must take good care of ourselves internally and externally. The more our mind and soul is preoccupied with pagan traditions and the world and flesh, the things of the flesh, the less room there is for the Holy Spirit and God to reside in you. You've got to clear the space out and fill it with Him and welcome Him. And when you do that, the peace of Jesus Christ lives in you like nothing I've ever personally ever experienced before I couldn't find that in in anyone in anything in nowhere it's incredible it's such a gift it is such a blessing if I can do it you can too When God told me, because I asked him, I said, look, you've made my body 
I'm asking you, God, for the past eight years, the doctors can't figure out. I have MS. I have, you know, a, a multiple sclerosis, and I've had this with my entire life. But this pain in my left hip and shoulder, that wasn't MS related at all. I knew it. But no doctors could figure it out. And I had IBS issues, uh, irritable bowel uh, syndrome problems for years. And I was bedridden. And so I asked, I prayed, I said, you know, I just want to be able to clean my body and clean my home and be able to feed my husband and I good home-cooked meals that are better for us, that are nutritious, not filled with commercial crap that is not food for the body that he created. And he immediately answered me. Because I asked him, I said, you're the one that made me tell me, you know, I'll do what you tell me to do. Tell me how to fix this, please. It's pinning me down. And he healed me. He told me, he says, cut out seed oils. They're terrible for your body, first of all. And I knew that. We barely had anything. We only had mayonnaise and we had some chips that, and both had canola oil or rapeseed oil is what you call it. Canola is a trademark, so. But... That was the only thing that I was consuming regularly. And I was immediately obedient. Stopped it right then and there. And I was healed immediately. I'm talking like 24 hours. Completely gone. The pain in my shoulder and my hip. I used to spend hours in bed with a percussion massager and each session on the massager if you put it on turn it on excuse me it's like a 30 minute time frame and then it stops automatically and I would run this thing on my shoulder on my hip laying in bed between 30 minutes to two hours a day excuse me almost every day because I was in so much pain and I was so fatigued and I didn't even realize that that was causing me also fatigue, the, the, the seed oils. And so when he healed me from that, that extreme fatigue that was preventing me from showering for weeks at a time, I could not shower. I didn't have the strength. I, didn't, I couldn't even sometimes raise my arm to wash my hair. You can ask my husband. He's a witness to that. He's been living with me all this time. God healed me. He gave me the answer and I obeyed him immediately. And it's been gone. And after about 10 days or so, I said to my husband, well, let me test this out. I'll just have a little bit of mayonnaise on my toasted sandwich. And I had some. Just that one time. Boom. Immediately the pain came right back in my hip and in my shoulder extreme fatigue and I was bedridden for two days and I said I am not going back there ever again and I quit it and that stuff went out the door and neither one of us is consuming anything like that anymore that is it my husband is severely disabled and he also has pain and other things and quitting the seed oils didn't take any pains away from him it didn't really change anything for him at all and i've been going for months now <laughs> months and months now that i'm just feeling totally so much better i still have ms i still deal with you know the real ms stuff 
But this stuff was the worst of it, and it wasn't even MS-related. But my husband now, over time, it's funny, his skin on his face is no longer gray or green or just off color. He's still dealing with his disabilities, and I mean, he has congestive heart failure, so that's a really difficult condition to live with. Um, but he is feeling better mentally. He is feeling better physically some days. His color looks so much better. And it takes time, but over time, for me, it was a drastic change. And I prayed to God, because He's the only one. He's my maker. But it's improving, and it's helping my husband, too. And that is all thanks to God. And the IBS, the irritable bowel syndrome that I was having, it's all gone. Like, this is life-changing. Ask anybody who has IBS. So I'm here to tell you that when you obey God, Good things will happen. But we must be willing. Do I miss the mayonnaise? I don't anymore. But we can change our habits. We can improve and do better. This has been a miracle. A miracle. I wouldn't be able to do these videos twice a week. Not in the state that I was in. I was bedridden and I couldn't even shower. I showered earlier before filming this video. Normally I would take a shower and I'd be in bed for up three days to a week. Not able to do anything. Anything. But I was able to cook today. I was able to put away some groceries. I was able to shower and I had a nap. After my shower, I lay down. I was tired because I had already done quite a bit today for me. <laughs> and I set my alarm. I don't normally set alarms because it doesn't agree with my MS brain and everything. Alarms and being jolted and things like that doesn't agree really well. But I set my alarm to make sure that I would be obeying God and start my recording. I had my notes done since the weekend so that I could come here and record my video as promised, as requested. Did I feel like getting up out of bed? I actually did. There would have been a time I go, oh, I don't really want to do it. Snooze, I'll do it tomorrow, you know. But no, I got up and took me a few minutes, you know, to wake up and all that, and that's okay. But I was happy and eager to get up and come do this recording for you. Because I obey Yahweh. And sometimes it's not always comfortable to obey Him. But I am so thankful and I love Him so much. I will do anything for Him. What's in the flesh? I can rest tomorrow. 
I'm not doing this begrudgingly. I'm doing this with full love. God has blessed me so much. I'm really thankful. And I want you to experience His love and His full blessings. with joy in your heart, with peace in your heart. God did not create your beautiful soul for you to go through life tortured as I was. Jesus Christ died for us so that He could send us the Holy Spirit and we could be renewed. So please, if you're new to this channel, subscribe to this channel. Watch the other videos that I've recorded over the past four months. I'm here to help you as God has helped me. I am His servant. I love you. I know it matters. I hope this reaches you wherever you are in your journey. You are not alone. Nobody is too far off or too far gone. Jesus Christ goes looking for his lost sheep. And unfortunately, many of them are born again Christian and yet so very lost as I was. We're getting lost in this pagan world. We are getting deceived on a level that is so hard to imagine. It's going to get worse. So please subscribe, like and comment to help push the algorithm out for these videos to go out to help others too. I'm here to help you train so that then you can turn around and fulfill what God is calling you to do. But in order to be able to hear His voice and to know what He, he needs you to do and He wants you to do, He's never going to ask you to do something that is uncomfortable. He's so gentle and loving. He wants to develop you into the person that He created you to be. He loves you so much. Never forget that. So those are the basics, you know. Eliminate strife from your life. You get need to get along with the people in your home. Clean your body, your mind, your soul. Clean your home. Get rid of pagan idols. Get rid of anything that is not of God. Get rid of alcohol. We were not drinkers or heavy drinkers, but he told me, get rid of the alcohol that's in your home. I had homemade vanilla beans soaking in rum for like over a year. I wanted to make some homemade vanilla uh, extract for baking and things like that. And he told me to get rid of it. And I did. I obeyed him. Went down the drain... The beans gone in the garbage, gone. Because alcohol is not of God. It's poison for the body. No matter how little you consume, it doesn't matter. So obey God, clean your home, clean your 
body and your own home and your soul. Pray for the Holy Spirit to help you, show you anything that is not of God. And He will tell you. Be attentive to His promptings. So those are the basics that you must master first. And the Holy Spirit will train you, just as He's been training me and continues to train me. So I pray that you will ponder upon this message that you've heard tonight. And pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you. Listen. And more importantly, obey Him. Much love to you, my friends. Be well. I'll see you on Thursday.